you want me to paint it off? If you just put it on silent, it'll be fine. Right. We'll just have a seat in that brown chair right there for you, sir. You want me to wear my mask? That's your choice. If you want to keep it on, you're more than welcome to. You can take it off. All right. Give me just one second. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Okay, sir, if you would, just give me your full name, date of birth and age, and your address, please. Uh, my full name is Carlo Magno Leon Jimenez. Um, I'm an international student. Well, not a student anymore. I'm an international person from Colombia. Okay. Um, my address is 139 Cypress Avenue, Nacres, Louisiana, zip code 71457. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else? Uh, your date of birth and age. I was born uh, November 15th, 1997. Okay, so how old are you? I am 24 years old. 24. Okay, and do you go by Carlo? Or do you Carlo. Go? Okay, sir. Mr. Carlo, I'm Lieutenant Jeff Townsend with the Nacris Police Department. I'm just going to get your statement today. Uh, instead, I know you spoke with Sergeant Parrott, but he's tied up on something else right now, so he asked me if I could just uh, go ahead and I know you got to get to work. Where do you work at, Mr. Carlo? I work at the Nacris Ferris Library. Okay. Part time. Part time. And were you at work this past Saturday? Yes, sir. It was me and my boss, Russell and Lacour. Okay. And while you were at work Saturday, was there an incident that occurred where y'all had to contact the police? Yes, sir. Um, do you want me to keep talking well, about Well, who, who called the police? Do you remember? It was, was my boss. It was your boss, Ms. Rogland? Yeah. Okay. Tell me about what happened. What prompted y'all to contact the police? Well, so, like, it was during lunchtime, and she wasn't even supposed to be there. She was just covering lunches because we were a little bit understaffed, and, uh, so it was the two of us. Um, I was pulling things from the shelves uh, for patrons that were put in holes and whatever. And then um, this patron walked in. Um, he walked in. He came through the um, stairs that connect the first floor with the second floor. And then he walked in, and he didn't look to the right where the circulation desk is at. Um, he just he kept walking. And then my boss was like, hey, can I help you? Is there anything I can help you with? And then, in a very rude manner, he said, what is there that you could help me with? You know, it was very rude and aggressive about it. So she was like, oh, I was just trying to help, sir. I'm sorry. And we didn't say anything. Uh, she just said, that man is angry or whatever. And then um, he proceeded to, to walk towards the back of the stacks. He was walking towards the back. And then he did this. He walked towards the back of the stacks. And then he walked this way. And he kept looking for something. We just couldn't figure out what it was. He walked around, walked around, walked around. And then we have the DVDs right here and then an emergency exit right here. And then he didn't even acknowledge the DVDs. He just looked at the exit, looked up and down, and then he did this. And then he walked uh, back the same route. And then he went uh, towards the area where we're, we're supposed to have a um, copy machine installed. And he was there. And then, um, well, he, he all, we also noticed that he had two backpacks. He had one on his back, and he was carrying uh, one on his right hand. So uh, that was strange, at least to me. And um, so he went towards the back, and my boss said, hmm, there's something weird about this. I'm just going to go call the police. You stay here, and I'm going to tell them to just, like, um, park outside or something, and then if, if they need to come inside, then I'll tell them. I was like, okay, sure, go ahead. Well, I was by myself, and she was outside calling the police. Um, I started hearing, like, like it was noisy, it's like this. And like, it, it, like it was something being set down? Yes, yes, on the desk, and very loudly, very loudly. And I was like, mm, I'm by myself, I shouldn't go check by myself, I'm going to stay here. But it, it kept happening. Then she came back. 
And then she heard it, and she was like, what is that? I'm like, I think that's the guy. Uh, we had other patrons, but they were reading, mm -hmm. you know? Like two more patrons. We were pretty empty that day. Um, he kept doing it, and I was like, hey, I have these books right here. I'm going to go shelve in that area, and then uh, I'll tell you. So I went back, and she said, be careful. I went back, and um, he, was, he wasn't making eye contact with me, but he was like, glinting at me, you know, to see what I, if I was, like, paying attention to what he was doing. And, like, I was trying to do the same thing, and he kept, like, looking at me and taking things out of his backpack. I couldn't see anything because there was a, a plant covering um, the, my view. So he, was, he kept doing the same thing. I went back, and I told my boss, he just, he's taking things out of his backpack. And this whole time in my head, I was like, He's putting together a gun or something like that. I'm not going to lie. I was pretty scared because I've been here in the States almost seven years, and I've seen the news, right. you know, and you just got to be weary, and you got to be cautious and all of that, and it's a public space, so anything can happen. So, so you could not see what no, was pulling out no, of the backpack? Okay. No, I could not see it, uh, and then, um, so yeah, that's what he was doing, and then one of the police officers um, arrived. And he walked towards the back, and then I heard them talk, and then the rest of them arrived. And that's when they were talking, and he started saying they were violating his uh, First Amendment and his Fourth Amendment and just everything. Yeah. All right. When he came in, could you tell how he was dressed? Do you, can you give me any just description on that? Uh, it was... He was wearing jeans, um, taller than, tall, at least taller than me. I'm 5'9". Um, I'd say he was about 6'6". Six, six um, what else? I couldn't really see his face that well. I think he was, was he wearing a mask? I can't remember, so I'm just going to say that. I can't remember. Okay. But I, I could not uh, see his face properly. I don't know see if it was because he was wearing a mask or maybe he, he had a jacket that covered his face. I don't remember very well. Was this a white male, black white male? White male. White male. male, yes, sir. All right, so did you have any verbal interaction or physical interaction at all with him? Not at all. Okay. So he comes in, and I just want to make sure I'm, I'm tracking correctly. He comes in through the stairs entrance mm -hmm. to the library, mm -hmm. walks Toward the back of the library, around, sees the emergency exit, looks it up and down, turns around, walks back the same path, goes into the area where you're supposed to be getting a coffee pot installed, mm -hmm. and then that was enough to alarm your boss. Yeah. And she says that she's going to step out and go ahead and call the police. Yeah, because the, this whole time, he, w he wasn't just like walking around, he was like, as I said before, it, it looked like... He was looking for something specific. We just couldn't figure out what it was. He was like, like doing this, you know? Okay. So. All right. And while he was doing that looking around, was he looking at any books or was he looking no, at the structure? Or it was more like maybe cameras. I think that's what he was looking for, I think. Okay. And, yeah, because he kept looking up, you know? Okay. All right, so... When your boss steps out to contact the police, you stayed, I'm assuming, at the desk? Mm hmm so And that's when you started hearing the banging noises yeah. as if something was... Yeah. So your boss comes back in, and you had some books you needed to go file anyway, so you walk in that direction to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. And when you got to where you were at, you said it, it, he wasn't staring at you, but it was like he was watching you enough to see if you were watching him. Yeah. But you could not see what he was taking out of his bag. No, sir. All right, did you ever find out what it was that he took out of his bag? Not really, but the next day, uh, we found, well, not the next day, the next day was Sunday. On uh, Monday, we found uh, three hard drives stacked together, one on top of each other, and it would make sense, like, they were making that noise. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we found that. We found a long cable, and his laptop wasn't there. So maybe that's what he was doing. And he, to me, it seemed like he he meant to be disruptive. Okay. He meant it. 
Okay, and that's the impression that you got? Yes. Okay, those, those three hard drives that you located Monday, did they belong to the library? No. Where are those at now? I'm not sure. I think they are the circulation desk. Okay. Yeah. And the cable that you found, uh, did it belong to the library? No. Okay. And it would be with the hard drives? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's how we knew that they were his, because mm-hmm. no one went in that area, in that area on Monday. Okay. I worked uh, the morning shift. So that's did you shift. ever see him try to access any areas of the library that are off limits or no. anything like that? No. Okay. He mostly stayed in the second floor, you know, and we don't really have, other than the circulation desk, the patrons can just, like, walk around. Okay. You know. <coughs> All right, and the only other employee there that day was your boss, Miss Rosalind. On the second floor. On the second floor. Yeah, on the first floor, um, it was my other co-worker, another part-timer, her name is Emily, and she told us, oh, yeah, uh, I asked him how he was doing, and he completely ignored me, and, but I didn't think anything of it, because people sometimes are mission-oriented, you know, right. they're like, oh, I'm going to get this thing, and I don't want to get distracted, so... So he, he evidently came in through the first floor mm-hmm. entrance up the stairs to the floor that you were on. Mm-hmm. So we need, who were the, the names of the workers that were down on the first floor that would have seen him possibly? Emily. What's I it? think her last name is Emily Walker. Okay. She's a part-timer, just like me. Uh, she was in the children's desk. Okay. And then Miss Frances, but I don't know her last name. She's been working on the library for years. Okay. So they were the only two down there on that floor, Miss Francis and Emily. Miss Francis, Emily. Yes, and I think Paul was at lunch. Okay. So that's why he wasn't there. Okay. And on the second floor was you and Miss Rosmond. Mm-hmm. What a, is there a third floor? Or something yeah, but that's, that's uh, administration. He didn't go up there. Okay. So the only workers that would have been able to see him would have been you, Miss Roslyn, and Emily, and Miss Francis. Miss Francis. Okay. All right. And uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add to your statement? Not really. I think I've said it all. I just, I was legit scared. I was scared um, because you, you, you just, you, you never know. Never so know. you perceived his his behavior to be extremely suspicious. Then. Yes. Yes. Okay. If you, if you can, just kind of describe to me why you thought this was suspicious. Well, first, the way he talked to my boss. You can be rude in many ways, but he was rude and aggressive about it. Mm-hmm. You know? His tone was just aggressive, you know? And my boss is very sweet. Like, I just, I, I, that threw me off, okay. you know? That, and then the fact that he was looking at like the exit door and everything, I'm like, in my head, like I was, I was making a scenario, you know, I'm like, maybe he wants to start something, he has a gun or something like that, and he was looking for the closest um, exit, you know, so that's what I thought, you know, the whole walking around, looking out for the cameras and all that, like. So how long have you worked for the library? Five and a half months, roughly. Okay. So you've seen a lot of people coming in and coming out. Yeah. You know, patrons. Is uh, is the behavior that this gentleman exhibited Saturday, is that consistent and common with behavior you've seen from other patrons in the past? No, we had one patron um, followed Emily, actually, but that, 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 that was taken care of. You know, he was just being like, Wherever she would go, he would go in the same the same area and all of that. But that was taken care of, you know. And that was fine. And uh, at least he like picked up books and he would like walk around with a book, you know. But you've not noticed anyone else that came in to appear to be looking at exits and cameras or anything like no, that. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. No. That's 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 it. Okay. I'm going to conclude your interview. Today's date is. Thursday, January 27, 2022. The time now is 11.54 a.m.
Is there anything else you need to do? Or uh, no, I'm just going to let you come right up here. Right.